Well, this is baby who is just going to be examined for her newborn care. And most importantly, what I will be checking about is her jaundice. My name is Vinnie Bhutani, and I'm a baby doctor. And we are here to talk about baby's jaundice. Most of all, when we examine a baby that is as gorgeous as this baby, with permission of mom, who's right here, we want to get a gestalt of what the baby looks like. And as you can see, and you focus your eyes, as to see how the baby handles with your handling, how the baby responds to your handling. As you can see her stretching out and being at rest and being calm. When she's awake, I'm sure she's alert, which she was just a little while ago. All that tells me and feeds back into the general information that we have a well baby over here. And we want to check the baby out specifically for jaundice. As you all know, jaundice is a very common sign in almost every baby. And it may appear the day after birth or a couple of days after birth and then lasts for about a week and then gradually resolves. In looking for jaundice, the first impression is just looking at the skin tone of the baby. Just as like when you're meeting somebody new and you look at their skin and you say, hey, are you tanned, right? Or is that your natural color? And we all have our natural colors. It's always good to compare the skin tone of the baby with that of the mother and other members of the family who may be present. Right away, as you can see in this little baby, is that there is a yellow tinge to the skin tone. And the skin tone color is apparent not only in the forehead of the baby, as you would see, but especially under the orbits, on the tip of the nose and the chin. And you can actually see that color gradually become lighter, but still present as you go further down the baby's torso and limbs. So to assess this jaundice, one thing we must refrain from doing because in our minds, we know that the jaundice is due to a high bilirubin value. And the bilirubin value that is high is due to a natural surge that occurs in all babies for the first few days. So it's a very benign situation. But the thing that we do not want to do and refrain is try and guess the bilirubin number. It used to be a game among students and faculty that you look at the baby's bilirubin value, hi, this is a smiling baby, and you guess what the bilirubin value might be if you checked it. We have cautioned everybody against that because there are many, many pitfalls in that. So when I'm looking for jaundice, after I've looked at the baby overall and get a sense of the skin tone, I take my middle finger and I place it on the forehead. And I press the forehead, the bone underneath the forehead, so the skin blanches. You can see the blanching of her eyebrows already, right, when I do that. When I remove my finger away, you'll see how the skin circulation returns. And for that fraction of a second, you will see the lemony yellow colored tinge. There we go. I can do that same thing on the nose, because there's cartilage behind the nose, or at the chin, at the mandible. Other areas away from the face are the sternum, the ziffy sternum, and then the elbows, as well as the wrists, the knees, and the ankles. And as you can see in this baby, that the yellowness that you see in the forehead and in the face and in the nose is not present in the ankles. The ankles look very nice and pink. When I blanch away the skin, there's no lemony colored that is present. This is the assessment of jaundice in its location and different locations. And this baby is representing to us not only the gestalt of being jaundiced, but a cephalocaudal progression of jaundice. 
And so you can see the progression of jaundice almost up to the ziphy sternum. Now this color can be gauged. One way to gauge the color is to say it's yellow, but there's so many different shades of yellow. Look at the lemons that you see in the market. So it's a lemony colored, but a lemony colored is far lighter than an orange color. An orange color would be a much severe jaundice. A pumpkin color jaundice may be even more severe. So we look at the different shades of yellow that are important. Now this baby's skin tone, underlying skin tone is generally very white and there's very limited melanin pigment that is present in the skin. So our view of this jaundice can get blocked by the presence of absent light if it is dark or it can be diminished if there's a melanin pigmentation of the skin. Skin color like mine, it'll be hard to see the lemon color or a skin color that is deeper than mine. Similarly, among Asians, East Asians, there are yellow chromophores that are present in the skin and they may prevent your true assessment of the degree of jaundice. Similarly, among Hispanics, there are yellow chromophores and that may be different and as well as among Native Americans. So, knowing the ethnicity and the background of the family is important because yes, you can assess the presence of jaundice, but you don't have to go overboard by labeling a baby jaundice if you're dealing with a family with yellow chromophores or not worrying about jaundice in babies with darker skin force like melanin in Asian, South Asian, and African American. So the color of the skin is important, but also realizing there are presences of other environmental factors that limit your assessment of jaundice. Now, where else should we look for jaundice? And the most important thing is, is it severe? One thing we do know that the jaundice is severe if it is present in the distal limbs. Remember we talked about the cephalocaudal progression. Hi, gorgeous. Am I disturbing you? As we talk about the cephalocaudal progression of jaundice, jaundice is going to get deposited in the areas that have the most circulation. And so areas that have lesser amount of circulation like hands and feet will be less jaundiced. And so it's important to look at the wrists and the palms the ankles, but sometimes more important as the baby gets older is to look at their nails. If you can focus in on the nails, you can see the nail beds, they're nice and pink, all right? Similarly, if you can focus on the nail beds of the toes, which are really, very, really, very small, you may see the yellowness if the babies are yellow. So if you see jaundice or lemony colored tinge in the nail beds or in the nail beds of the feet, that means that the baby has very severe jaundice. That should remind you of an emergency and say, I really want to know this bilirubin right away. I can't wait, all right? Similarly, this baby's eyes throughout her examination has been closed. But as she gets older, she'll open her eyes as the edema around her eyelids go away and you'll be able to see the white of her eyes. The sclera also deposits bilirubin and that appears yellow. And so that jaundice usually starts to be visualized a day after birth and then accumulates as the jaundice rises or as bilirubin rises. And so the last thing to go away from the baby's body as the bilirubin anemia resolves is the yellowness of the sclera. Presence of yellowness of the sclera at one week of age should worry you to investigate what's going on. So that is about newborn jaundice. What is helpful is to make sure that the baby is well, all right? Because we know that if the bilirubin value is high 
and is hurting the baby, that baby will be sleepy. Now, all babies are sleepy, so not a big deal. But if they're sleepy and they don't respond to you, like this gorgeous baby is responding to, as I touch her and hold her, and she has nice muscle tone, that tells me that her neurological status is well. So one last thing that I like to stress is that as I start to leave the baby, I want to make sure that my assessment has been appropriate and correct. And what I would do is just pick up the baby and this way I'm assessing the baby's tone also is to bring her knees close to her belly button. And you can see that the lower part of her abdomen is more lemony yellow than her knees. And that reassures me that this jaundice is benign. It hasn't spread further. I still want to know the bilirubin test, but at least clinically, I can reassure the mom that this jaundice so far at this day of the baby's age, less than 48 hours, this is a benign situation. And that's all we need to do with the jaundice, differentiate benign from those who could have an adverse outcome when they go home. And the mom can track the progression of jaundice just as I have and just as you will teach her to do. Thank you.